this will be a brief lecture about tips and tricks of lymph nodes. Lymph nodes may be normal, reactive, inflammatory, metastatic, or lymphoma involvement. There are some parameters being used to characterize the lymph nodes. The shape, hyaluronic echogenicity, parenchymal echo, margins, and vascularity. The short axis diameter should be considered in the transverse plane. The other parameter is short axis to long axis length ratio. Most of the time, it's less than 0.5 for normal and reactive lymph nodes, and for over 0.5, it's considered abnormal. Here are some examples. The transverse plane short axis, and this is the long axis. This means a flat or ovate lymph node. This is a spherical pathological lymph node, short axis and the long axis measurements. The other parameter is the echogenicity of the hyaline. The reflective interface of the sinus content makes the hyaline echogenic. It's a benign lymph node finding most of the time. Maybe lacking in small normal lymph nodes, effacement, obliteration, distortion or displacement is always abnormal. These are two reactive lymph nodes. The echogenicity of the hyaline is preserved and not distorted, not displaced. These are abnormal examples. You see the amputation of the hyalus, displacement of the echogenicity. These are two lymphoma examples. And this is a metastatic lymph node, no echogenicity of the hyaline. The normal echogenicity is less than the muscles. The solid content with necrosis is a common finding of squamous cell carcinoma metastasis, hyperechogenic for cell, entirely papillary carcinoma metastasis, and cystic areas almost always thyroid papillary carcinoma metastasis. Hypoechogenic lymph node with reticulation is a finding of lymphoma. You see the echogenicity of the normal reactive lymph nodes, inhomogeneous, completely destructed architecture of the lymph node and necrosis area, hyperequic mixed echogenicity lymph node here, cystic components and hyperechogenic foci in that case, hyperechogenic foci and cystic components here. These are quite characteristic for thyroid papillary carcinoma metastasis. Even with this small lymph nodes, the bright fossa here makes the diagnosis of thyroid papillary carcinoma metastasis. These are two typical examples of lymphoma, diffuse hypoequic lymph nodes and the reticulation inside. The other parameter is the margins. In normal, or in normal and reactive lymph nodes, the margins are discernible, but not too much discrete. In contrary, metastatic and lymphoma in movement, the margins are mostly discrete and well defined, unless they are aggressive. If they are aggressive, the margins will be infiltrated. On the other hand, modern margin discontinuity and perimeter speculations are the findings of inflammatory lymph nodes. This is a reactive lymph node. You see the margins, but not discrete as that, that here. This is a metastasis and this is a lymphoma. Very well-defined margins. In that non-specific lymphadenitis, you see the rupture here. The margins are closed. And this is an aggressive tumor metastasis. You see the margins are closed. This was a lymph node in the inguinal area, which was painful. You see the margins are lost and speculations here. And this was a tuberculosis patient. You see the diagnosis by operation. You see the periodinitis and the rupture of the lymph node. Vascularity is another parameter. And preservation of muscular hierarchy is important. This means. The vascularity branching should be like a tree, and all it should be only from the hyaline. Distorted, angulated, squeezed vessels, 
distal is larger than the proximal intramural shunts are always abnormal. Peripheral or capsular vascularity is also abnormal, which may be secondary to tumoral angiogenesis or due to periodinitis. This is a reactive lymph node, not so much increased parenchymal vascularity, and the hierarchy is preserved. And these are two different cases. In this one, you see the capsular vascularity, internal shunts, amputations, angulations. You see, squeezed. Here are the distortion of the vessel. These are abnormal findings. For characterization of lymph nodes, one of the findings is diagnostic. But combination of findings may approach to 90% accuracy. Ultrasound guided finding illustration may yield up to 97% accuracy, other than the lymphoma lymph nodes, because lymphoma lymph nodes cannot be diagnosed by finding the aspiration. Thank you for listening.